Hey there. So I have been testing uh, Nitrux uh, operating system. I was actually searching uh, for the internet uh, for the best KDE plasma distribution. That was my keyword search. Uh, I was trying to find something that uh, looks nice out of the out of the box that uh, works good out of the box. I am, and I'm talking about KDE plasma, right? So one of the search results said Nitrux uh, operating system. Uh, I said, okay, why not? Uh, it sounded intriguing. It's an immutable Debian-based distribution with a lot of customization. Um, and um, I don't know, let, let me show it to you. Unfortunately, my capture card did not capture the login screen uh, because the login screen thought that I have two separate monitors, which is technically true, uh, but I, I wanted to have it um, mirrored between my laptop screen and the capture card so that you can see it, but, well, it is what it is. One of the first things that I have noticed uh, with the uh, Nitrox operating system is that it's heavily customized in terms of plasma design. Uh, it has, uh, I mean, the, the no normal set of icons are over there. Uh, the launcher for the applications is on the bottom. Uh, all this looks pretty uh, normal, right? Uh, however, if you go to the... Uh, file manager you will see that it's custom made uh, and when you move it it's transparent that looks nice uh, these are mounted file systems I'm going to talk about that in a little bit uh, so one of the things that I have liked a lot uh, which worked out of the box was when I opened Firefox and started scrolling. I'm not sure how much can you see in this frame rate, uh, but basically I'm scrolling with two fingers and it's pretty much direct drive. Something like, um, you know, have you ever had a friend who tried your Linux uh, uh, distribution and said, whoa, this is so janky, like, uh, why can't you Linux guys have scrolling like uh, Safari, a web browser on macOS? Like, that's perfection. I mean, this is pretty much what Safari does, in my opinion. I have used Safari on other people's Mac OSs, and I, I personally can't tell the difference uh, between this scrolling and that scrolling, so I have no idea how Nitrox team uh, did this, and I'm definitely going to find out, uh, because I definitely want this on my distribution uh, of choice. And um, I think more... Linux distribution makers uh, should pay attention to these little th little things such as touchpad scrolling, right? Th this is just phenomenal uh, how they did that, and I don't know uh, how. Uh, so the icons for closing the window, maximizing and minimizing are over there. Uh, you can launch like a software center. You can launch, uh, let's say what well, this is, uh, audio player. Okay, and the typical alt tabbing works like this. It's really nice and uh, uh, beautiful. If you want to click uh, on the application that is in the background, you just like tap it and it will, uh, it will roll around and go to the front. It looks very nice, like a cool little effect. I mean, this is what I was looking for, right? When I uh, searched on the internet for the uh, for for a really good uh, plasma-based distribution. Uh, as far as I know, Nitrox is not going to stick with plasma. They are shifting to their own desktop environment. Apparently, uh, I didn't I didn't dig into it too much, but I have read on their web page that. Uh, latest Plasma 5.27, which is installed right now, is their last uh, version of Plasma until they switch to to their to their environment, right? And they already have a lot of um, they already had have a lot of 
uh, their own software, right? So we can just scroll around. This is the um, application launcher here. Uh, Waydroid is installed by default. We can check utilities. Uh, it can offer you a uh, quick installation of these uh, uh, these applications, right? So it says install Steam here, but I have already clicked it uh, a couple of days ago and it did install Steam. Yeah, so graphics applications uh, like Pix. I don't have any pictures uh, to show, but these are all uh, applications from uh, Nitrox team and they look pretty good and, and pretty uh, eye catchy uh, and they are all unified in terms of what, what they look like, right? Uh, so one of the things that I have, um, I mean, it, it's not like, it's not obvious, right? It's an immutable distribution, but there is no app package manager or any other package manager. So if you go to their website, I have actually asked them, I have asked them, how do I install Emacs? So I already know that I can install Emacs through Flatpak, uh, but that was not the point of my question. And they did point me to this URL, which says, Nitrox is a distribution that doesn't revolve around package manager like other distributions. In Nitrox, the preferred method of updating new software is using app images. We're going to get to that in a little bit. However, we understand that not all software is available as an app image, so by default we have included various options for users such as Flatpak or Distrobox to complement app images. So what Distrobox is, is basically a container inside which you install another operating system. So you can install, for example, uh, Ubuntu or Debian or Fedora. Uh, and that's not the best way that I would install uh, an application on my operating system. I want my Emacs to be installed locally. And the reason why I don't want a flag pack version uh, is another one that I'm not going uh, to get, go into in this video. Uh, so ideally, I would have Emacs installed locally, uh, but I guess that in order to get something like that, uh, I'm going to have to lobby uh, for the Nitrox team to include it in their base operating system. And why I say this like that is they have included some of the uh, packages uh, in their base operating system, which is again immutable and you cannot actually change anything uh, in their in the root uh, part of the system. Uh, so they are pulling all their packages from Debian, either uh, unstable or testing, I'm not sure. I have compared some of the package version and they are pretty similar or the same uh, as Debian have uh, or has in their unstable and in testing, so it's it's one of those uh, for for sure. Uh, and if they could, uh, if they would listen to people and include some of the packages that are not very convenient to install from um, App Image and uh, Flatpak, such as Emacs, uh, I think that would be very good in the long run. I'm not sure how much of the um, effort would that uh, take from them and com compare to how much uh, is there any need uh, for Emacs on a distribution such as Nitrox. Uh, and speaking of distributions such as Nitrox, um, I'm still struggling to understand who would this be for. So from one point of view, this uh, is an amazing effort. Um, this is, I can tell that these people have invested a lot of time and their love uh, into making this product. It's immutable. They want uh, us as users not to be able to break it in any way. Uh, they will complement um, this 
distribution with the latest packages pretty often. If I um, correctly noticed, they have like one new version per month or, or something like that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, that's pretty damn good uh, in terms of getting latest software all the time. And the the part where you installed uh, install desktop software from App Images, uh, this is something that we are going to talk about now. So what happened when I opened uh, Annex Software Center for the first time is that I wanted to install Telegram. So I would type telegram and see what it finds for me i already know that there is a telegram flat pack uh, version so that's good and we're searching okay telegram app image there we go uh there is um i think this is a name from the uh, person who has packaged this uh, as an app uh, image and you click get and it goes to the um uh, version of uh, the file that you want to download and you click it and basically nothing happens you can click all you want it will not uh, trigger a thing uh, let's go to the um, back button back button okay let's delete this let's go to something uh, here like Krita okay get it get it and there's nothing here so what's going on i have already uh, researched a little bit and they apparently have a bug with software center in this current version of uh, nitrux os and what the problem with this is is that they have actually already fixed this problem I think they were pretty fast in fixing uh, the bug they, they caused, uh, but the problem with the whole situation is that there is no apparent way how can I as a user get the newest version of uh, Software Center. So uh, the newest version of Software Center will be included in the next version of uh, Nitrux, uh, but when that uh, might come, I'm not sure, maybe in one month, maybe in a couple of weeks, I don't know but in the meantime i seem to be stuck with the software center that doesn't work so this is one of the things that's uh, like good and bad with this operating system uh, you get um, infinite amount of um, being sure that nothing is going to break in your operating system unless the developer itself breaks it and if they do you are a little bit stuck so what I have done, I went to GitHub page where they have uh, the, do the download for this uh, software center uh, and you can download it into your home folder and you can run it from there. Whether this is ideal or not, uh, I'm not sure, but it doesn't actually update your software center. It just downloads another app image that sits in your home folder. So you can run it from there and it basically works but overall i didn't get the best impression that this is uh, handled very well i think they should have some kind of fallback uh, to these kind of stuff uh, when 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 they know that they have a problem with the operating system i think the operating system on its own should pop up with a notification there is an update waiting please click here to update uh, this and that and it should be uh, propagated to the end user as soon as possible because waiting a month uh, to have something fixed uh, to, to have something deployed that's already uh, fixed like weeks ago uh, it's kind of a bummer right uh, so another thing that bothered me with this uh, is I have a ThinkPad T480 and it's a pretty standard ThinkPad uh, it has a lot of support uh, from from Linux and basically i have never found anything that doesn't work out of the box uh on, on this laptop it's it's pretty um like a generic uh ultra compatible thinkpad uh you could even call it a linux laptop no it's it's not that uh, per se but it almost like it is uh so what happened with the nitrux is that during the installation process uh, which was uh, pretty easy and uh, amazing so during the installation process, the installer asks me if I want 
to install alongside uh, the current operating system or delete uh, the whole drive. So I uh, chosen to delete the whole drive and then it asks, uh, do I want swap? Do I want swap uh, with Hibernate or do I want a swap file or no swap? So I ch have chosen um, swap with Hibernate, which means that the swap partition is going to be bigger than my RAM. So when I go to shutdown, uh, there is basically no Hibernate option. Uh, why is that so? I don't know. I, I'm pretty confident that I could fix this uh, for myself, but, but it wasn't supposed to be like that uh, for a new user. Uh, and I just clicked cancel and Mozilla crashed and I'm sorry about that, but that's another thing about this operating system. Quit Firefox. So while the Firefox is quitting, um, what I was going to say is that uh, another feature that I rely on heavily uh, on my laptop is the ability to just uh, close the lid and go to sleep. So on this operating system, when I close the lid on this particular laptop, um, it seems like it goes into some kind of stuck situation because my LED light uh, from the laptop does not switch from uh, constant on to blinking because blinking or, or breathing uh, is um, an indication that the laptop is in a sleep state. This never happens, so I think it's still on. And when I open the lid, uh, then my power button is actually off, uh, which is kind of weird. Uh, and if I press it a couple of times, then the operating system uh, sort of comes back to life, but everything crashes uh, pretty much just like now. And I have no idea what happened uh, here, uh, but basically this is where I'm going to wrap things up uh, with this uh, operating system. A question for you guys. Would you be interested in me uh, digging a little bit deeper into Nitrux? Uh, and are you interested in using immutable operating systems? Are you interested in using operating systems uh, which don't offer you a way to install um, system packages, but are giving you uh, a, an option to, I mean, it's not an option, it's a security uh, for, for you that nothing is going to ever break. So this sounds like a perfect thing for a new user, uh, except that as you can see, um, it, it's not very user friendly in terms of stability, I would say. Um, there are a couple more uh, cool things about Nitrux, uh, and that is um, they offer you uh, patched kernels, uh, which offer performance. Uh, they offer you uh, the ability to choose between two or three kernels of different kinds. Uh, they they have chosen a file system from Samsung, uh, which is optimized for flash storage. So I think that's quite good. Uh, usually I just pick uh, X4 for myself because I'm kind of old school in that in that way, but it, I think uh, the file system which they have chosen uh, for us is uh, actually a good choice. I don't know. Uh, I have depleted my, uh, my words. Uh, I'm going to leave it up to you. Do you want me to dig more into this operating system uh, on, and are you interested in hearing more or... Have you had enough uh, just from watching this video? Please let me know in the comments and I'm going to see you in the next one.